Hello and welcome to today's Business Spotlight, where we are joined by Alex Henney, Managing Director of Squab Storage. Alex, how are you? Very well. And yourself? Yeah, really good. Thank you. The sun is shining. So no complaints from me when the sun shines. Absolutely. I'm a very late Indian summer. I know it's always the way. It's, we've had a nice little sandwich, sort of June and September, treating us nicely. It's um, a shame about yeah. the other months in the middle. I know. I know exactly, exactly. It waters the grass. What can we say? Um, I like to dive straight in, Alex. Tell us um what you do and how long you've been doing it for, please. Sure. So I'm the managing director of Squab Storage. Uh, we are a self storage and workspace business, which is uh, headquartered in Leamington Spa. Uh, but we, over the last few years, we've been on an aggressive expansion plan, and we have got uh, now a number of sites not just in the Midlands, but now across the UK. Uh, we've got operational sites in Evesham and in Rubri in the Midlands. Uh, we've just recently opened up uh, a site in Stowe Market in Suffolk over in East Anglia. And mm. we are in the process of converting a site in Bridgewater in Somerset. And we have uh, recently purchased a new site in Warwick, which will hopefully be operational uh, during Q1 of next year. Oh, right on our doorstep, right on our doorstep. Um, tell us, um, why did you, why did you start the business? Um, where did you see the opportunity? Why so aggressive? Um, so it, it, it's a long story. Um, but but in essence, uh, I I previously worked in uh, banking for a number of years, and uh, my business partner uh, approached me about in essence taking what had been developed in Leamington Spa and pushing it forward um, and through a, a, a probably what I describe as a huge amount of analysis of the self-storage industry in the UK uh, we were able to identify a, a, what I describe as a, a significant opportunity uh, and what I mean by that is if you were to benchmark the UK self-storage industries against for instance uh, the US and uh, indeed, Australia, which is a, a very um, a developed market in self-storage, um, we are a hugely underdeveloped and underpenetrated market um, with the awareness of the product being incredibly low as well at the same time. I'm sure there's not many people out there who've either used self-storage or aware of the product. And that's what gets me excited. Um, and as a result, um, that's why we dipped our toe into it and we probably spent a good five six years honing and perfecting our business model not just what we do in terms of constructing buildings and the the actual asset construction but also our operating model as well at the same time and uh, from that, I think, you know, you may well have seen that we've won a number of uh, national and international awards for our product. And now that we've got that, what I describe as that, that um, uh, procedure and protocol manual in place, we're now taking the opportunity to roll that out uh, and, and aggressively increase the, the platform that we're trying to develop of the Squab storage brand in essence. Amazing. So blueprint, so analyze and almost blueprint, tried, tested before moving on. Absolutely. And, and you know, it was a long period of time and mistakes were made, understanding how we do it, um, honing and perfecting what we do. I, I'm not putting our hand in the air and say that we've got the, you know, we, we, we've got that right right now, but we are. Uh, we're in a far better place than we were, for instance, in 2015, when we first started out on the six mansion journey. Yeah. Has it been everything that you hoped it would be? Has it been everything um, from your analysis? And I know that you say that it's not been all smooth sailing and there's been some mistakes made. Um, but um, yeah, has it been everything that you hoped? I think, you know, forecasts and analysis are always wrong they're in, in intrinsically they are because you're predicting the future and the future changes because of a multitude of different reasons and whatever i put down in a spreadsheet is is always going to be wrong um i think you know we, we've been very unfortunate in some ways but incredibly fortunate in others where for instance the the impact that for instance the impact of brexit at the end of tail end of 2019 did have an impact on the way in which our business traded equally the, the the covid crisis was a huge boost to what we did um and what we do um so 
I, I think ultimately, you know, I, uh, the one thing that I'm a, a very big believer in is, is what I call a bottom up business plan, starting with what you need on the bottom line and working upwards with a conservative cost base to understand what you need your revenue line to be. And uh, I'm quite conservative in my business planning nature. And I think having that in my back pocket, whenever we're looking and planning our expansion plans, um, it is critical just to make sure that we're not doing something where we're probably overstretching ourselves is the best way in which to describe it. And is that why it's so important to forecast and to plan ahead, even though what you are putting down, like you say, potentially is? You, you, have, you have to have something to hang your hat on. And um, like I say, I'm very conservative in nature. I've worked around numbers for my whole career. And uh, if I can make something work with a bottom up business plan with very conservative assumptions, which do have some sort of historical precedent to them, um, then I'm comfortable in terms of investing in, and entering into a new new um, a new project. But you always have to have a view that or personally, I always have a, a view that I am setting those expectations and those budgets to be exceeded. Um, there, I, I, I'm not a believer in hyper optimistic scenarios where, for instance, you're going out raising funding and you're providing a set of numbers to an investor, which you have got no real interest in actually hitting. Um, I'm very proud of the fact that most of my budgets have been exceeded over the last eight, nine years. And that is because of that conservative bottom up approach that I take. Yeah, no, that's a great share. Um, what would you say makes you stand out um, in the industry? And that's um, I'd like to look at that both from um, a um, sort of local sort of UK base, but also internationally, if we could. Um, yeah, there's a there's a number of things that we focused on. Um, I, the, the, the one word that I would use is quality. Um, and that is across every element of what we do from the investment that we put into our buildings the the little idiosyncrasies of where we put that investment um is is very i think very different to the way in which some of our competitors invest we're also um we're also long term uh, and you know the one thing about squab i talk about squab storage but the squab family of businesses we're celebrating our 90th year of of, of business uh, which started with the agricultural farm that we've got down here in Leamington spa um but we also take a long-term view. And, and with that, we don't cut corners. We invest appropriately and we invest probably more than most people do. But the view is that that investment is there for the long-term and that's what we're here for. Um, so with that in mind, that 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 makes us stand out there. Uh, but I think also um, we have uh, what I've tried to instill within all of our management team and the managers of all of our sites is to start with an approach when a customer comes to us to start with yes until we until we have to say no there are too many businesses out there where a customer may well come to you with a with a business proposition in terms of how you know something that they're asking you to do and it's very easy to say no i can't do that computer says no in essence yeah. and we start with a proposition of that's very interesting yes and unless there is a barrier, you know, it may be a regulatory health and safety business regs perspective that we can't do it, yeah. then that unfortunately we part ways. But, you know, that has meant that we've done some really interesting projects, you know, specifically here in Leamington Spa. We've got a, a swimming pool in a collection of shipping I was, containers. I was just um, about to say I'd have loved to have been a fly on the wall when you said yes to the person that said that they would like to put a swimming pool in a container because I've seen it and it's phenomenal. Exactly. And we've got people operating um, uh, uh, barbers within self-storage units. And that is, in essence, what our business is about. And we have de it's, it's developed. It's not been, shall we say, something which we set out as a mindset at the beginning. But what we've tried to create now is more of, a, you know, we don't look at ourselves as a self-storage business we look at ourselves as the capability of creating communities within the facilities that are that we operate and that is very that's very much that's very obvious where even when you walk onto one of any of our facilities we have a, a trying to create a a community across the assets there may be you know about 50 percent of our customer base now are commercial customers um 
uh, and we carried out an exercise of about this time last year where we identified, for instance, in Leamington Spa, we have close to 200, 250 individual commercial customers who probably don't know each other and that they're using the same asset for their business. Well, surely there must be some sort of synergy that we can create, which allows those 250 businesses to potentially do business with each other. So we're creating, not only are they using our assets, but we're potentially creating value for them as a community within that asset. What, uh, what's what been your solution for that? So do you, what do you offer? Is it a networking? Is it a, yeah. how do you so get we, 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 we've worked hard to create um, uh, almost like a, a, a business package. Um, so we've got, we use a, a closed network, very similar to Facebook. We use something called Mighty Networks, which creates a closed network for all of our commercial customers, which they're allowed, they're able to um, subscribe to. They can share on there, they can promote, um, and it creates this almost, like I say, closed network symbiotic sort of structure for all of our commercial customers. We host a lot of events. Um, we've recently run a very successful networking event in our um, uh, store up in Rubri. We're rolling that out across the board. We hosted an autumn fair last year. We're looking at doing something similar later on this year. So it, we, 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 we add that personal touch, I think is the best way in which to describe it. And we're not, we're not a large Organ or getting bigger, but we're not a large organization, which means that we can put in that effort. Um, but our, our view is that we're investing again for the long term. You know, a lot of our customers come to us, they may well inquire in one month, and it might be six months before they make a purchasing decision. So we have to understand that our investment in the way in which we do things is not going to get a payback in one week, one month, it could be a year. And uh, hence the fact that we do take the slightly more longer term perspective. Mm. We don't know what we don't know, right? And what you've offered there is a solution um, for business, for, for your commercial, for your businesses um, to get their heads together. And um, one thing that I wanted to um, ask, actually, uh, we work with clients where we work on their vision, uh, their, their, their um, company's vision. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a hundred year uh, goal. It's it's something that's almost unachievable. Um, you're coming up to your you're a decade away from your hundred years. Yep. Um, what was your company's vision, and has that changed? And do you have a vision for the next ninety for the next hundred years? <laughs> I'm not going to say that we have a vision for the next next hundred years. Uh, uh, you know, th there are strategy is is an interesting proposition, really, because uh, very similar to the way in which I talked about the reason why, how we plan and we look at our business. Everyone has, you know, it's a, it's a great quote. Everybody has a plan until they get hit. Um, and, and I think that was Mike, uh, Mike Tyson quote, I think is the best way, which is, if I remember correctly, but we always look at strategy. Yeah, Emlyn and I, my business partner, we sit down and we have a very, uh, a very detailed strategic view i work very much on a strategic and a tactical perspective mm -hmm. strategic in terms of our long-term plan tactics about how we're going to implement that and um our strategy is very clear um and it, it you know so a five to seven year view that we have about how we're going to develop the business we work with bricks and mortar so it doesn't happen overnight you know building constructing renovating a building could take as much as two to three years so a seven-year horizon actually is quite short from that perspective it sounds quite long um from the perspective of you know as an individual but that's how we work so we have a we, we have a clear view that for over the next five to seven years of what we are going to achieve and then it feeds back to tactics about how we actually execute that um so yeah that that's kind of quite our, our kind of strategic view if you see what i mean yeah no i like it longer term and then tactics on how you're going to get there and um, what would you say you could attribute your growth to alex uh a lot of hard work um i think uh, if i take it back there was this an analytical view of there's an opportunity um rigorous analysis and understanding the marketplace and a real view that we could create a successful business. Mm -hmm. Then it goes back to exactly what we just talked about. How do we strategically carry that out? If you see what I mean, you know, an understanding of whether there's a, there's a beginning, a middle and an end of, of what that strategy looks like. Uh, and then equally, as I say, it's then a devoted cause to, to, to what you're actually trying to execute on uh, and not cut corners and do things well 
and and try and stick true to what that strategic vision is you can on a day-to-day basis very easily get you know and i'm guilty as the as the next person um to in essence get you know distracted by you know shifts and changes um but ultimately trying to stick to that strategic view is something that i think everybody could do well with looking you know execute short term think long term is the best way to describe it and i think that's very much how we look at things is that you have to you do have to you know take a view that what's going to be there in 10 years time and is this going to be a profitable successful organization in 10 years time and if you can uh, as i say through analysis and hard work get there then that should to my mind prove to be successful mm. Shying away from hard work is not something that uh, that you do by the sounds of it. But how do you balance your personal life with the demands of running the business? I love this question because everyone's like, um, "Badly." Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm so historically, as I say, I used to work in banking. I used to work all hours that there were weekends. You know, rarely went on holiday. That was my lifestyle then. My lifestyle is very different now. I've got three small children half the reason why i've gone into this and i also have a very uh, a situation that my wife also has terminal cancer so i'm in a situation in my personal life where i'm having to really focus on three small children where there's only three years and 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 everything that is comprised within that so how do i do it personally now is that i am very rigorous with my uh, with my with my time on and my time off, uh, and I'm uh, and I was incredibly bad at that, and I'm now a lot better at that. Which is the phone goes down, the phone goes off, and the the element of it. And I will admit that I'm a control freak to a degree, and I like getting in the detail, and I like getting in the weeds, and I like speaking to our customers on a day to day basis. But equally, you have to understand as the business grows that you do have to delegate and 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 take responsibility away from yourselves to those individuals that you have hired to take on that responsibility and trust them to trust them to execute so you know i was away on holiday last week the phone goes off it you know it, it doesn't uh, and that is the way that is the only way you know people talk about digital detoxes and that element and that in this day and age is the the only real way and which I think you can actually split that balance between what is an intense hard work environment to, in essence, providing yourself with that beneficial time that you have with family, friends, and, and what we need as humans to kind of continue to exist, if you see what I mean. Creating those boundaries, absolutely. I'm sorry to hear about, um, I'm sorry to hear about your wife. Yep. Um, creating those boundaries, um, having life events um, give us that nudge, give us that almost sort of punch um, is is one way to kind of wake us up to setting boundaries. Um, uh, we, we push our limits far too often. Um, are, do you have any words of advice for somebody that um, hasn't had the the, the, the the sort of the tap on the shoulder that you have, that this is something that you need to look at? You have to. You have to. The, the, the strange thing is, you, you know, lots of people, you, know, you can read lots of blogs and how millionaires and billionaires, you know, I, I get up at 5 a.m. I don't. I get up at 8 a.m. All, all this sort of stuff. Yeah. I, I think the the benefit that you do get, and as I say, I, I am an absolute, you know, I love getting in the detail. I, I absolutely, love, you know, I, that, I thrive on that. I thrive on the knowledge of, of building that knowledge bank up. But equally, you do have to appreciate that sometimes you do actually have to to get, you have to get out of that because you need to appreciate what else is going on around you, if you see what I mean. And, and you know, I, I spent many years looking at lots of different businesses. And in a strange way, that was hugely beneficial because that allowed me to garner huge learnings from other industries. Mm-hmm. Now I'm very much siloed and I'm very much aware of that. And sometimes, yeah, okay, whilst we've got we're plowing our fire own storage, am I learning from what's going on in e-commerce? not enough as what I used to. And the same can be, uh, you can draw the same sort of conclusion in life from the perspective of focusing very much on work. You're not getting the full balance of what you could be learning elsewhere, mm-hmm. which could be beneficial to your work environment. Yeah. So whilst it's hard and the pressures are always there, I, I always, and I'm equally as 
you know, it, it's as hard for me as, as the next person. Sometimes you just do have to just pull the plug and be able to say, look, I'm, I'm, you know, the phone is off. It's, you know, and you are spending that time away. And it, in a strange way, I always find, as I say, I've just come back from holiday in a strange way. I come back reinvigorated with new ideas about how we can do things, picking up a book, you know, reading something, talking to someone actually allows it is beneficial to you because it allows you to grow that knowledge base or thought process around what you're trying to do for your business. Mm -hmm. um, getting in the weeds is great, but equally you do need to spend that time actually contemplating. It's a bit, as I say, it's a bit like the short-term, long-term mentality. Yeah. Brilliant insight. What book are you reading at the moment? And I only say that because uh, a book I ordered came today, uh, The Visual MBA, which is so cool. Um, what book are you reading at the moment that we can recommend to our listeners? I love behavioural psychology. Um, and I always have done because from my previous uh, career, I was very much into um, uh, behavioural finance. Um, I'm reading something called The Nudge Unit, uh, which is quite an old book, but it's... Yeah. Um, uh, it's uh, it's about how small changes can create um, big effects. And it's uh, basically predicated uh, around um, a number of initiatives which were put in place in the time of the coalition government back in the, the 2010 period, um, which when you read the book, you'll, you'll go, wow, actually, I remember that. Uh, and, and I remember the effect of that. Um, and I find that, you know, I'm a big fan of Matthew Saeed and, you know, but as I say, um, behavioral uh, psychology and all that sort of good stuff. So, yeah, that's, that's what I've got on the side of the bed at the moment. Lovely. I've just made a note of that. That's great. Um, what would you say has been your biggest learning so far? Patience. I think. Um, when. I was younger, I think I was in a rush to get somewhere. And uh, I probably made decisions that were predicated on the fact that I was in a rush to get somewhere. Okay. As you get older, you realize that there's not quite so much of a rush. So investing in yourself, for instance, you know, what's my biggest regret in terms of my, um, uh, uh, in terms of my career, mm -hmm. I, I think probably one of the biggest ones is that I didn't study accounting. I didn't carry out, uh, did, didn't didn't follow an ACA or somewhere like that. Um, and the reason being because if you if you you know you get to this point in life and running your own business, you know the understanding of of numbers and accounting is critical. Yeah, I've got a good understanding, but I'm not fully qualified. Um, and I think back then it was the fact that. I wasn't willing to invest three years of my life in, for instance, you know, an accounting qualification. And, you know, it was, it was, you know, no, I'm not going to do that. That's, that's a, three years is a long time. I think the what I as I've become older, it's the patience of three years is not a long time, and that investment would have been a fantastic thing to have done. And I think as as I've as I've grown older, it's a view that in business things don't happen overnight it does take time and results take time and you can you can take a view that yeah you can make mistakes quickly that's fine but ultimately um having the patience to to carry out a strategy is is something which is critical if you see me yeah absolutely patience is a great one it's a great one i always like to end with um where do you see yourself in five years and do you have any words of advice for other business owners who are looking to grow their business five years time um i think as i say we've got a five to seven year strategy uh, you know i think we'll probably be close to the the, the end of the execution phase of that I, I would hope that we are that the the squab storage platform and brand is is a strong developed nationwide self-storage brand that we are still upholding the values and the ethos that I've talked about, which is one based on quality and uh, a personal touch with a, the capability of still being able to say yes to customers when they come in with, with ideas to us. Um, I don't see any real change on that in the next five years. And as I say, having patience and, you know, five years might sound like a long time, but it does go pretty quickly if you see what I mean. Yeah. Uh, 
and if you know going to your second question what would what would i what, what um uh, what would i uh, in terms of advice for people who are looking to grow their company I, I think i go back to the point that i made at the beginning is if you've got an opportunity where you can sit there with a bottom up business model and give yourself an idea of what that top line needs to look like in five years time and you can put together a strategy then i think that that is a really really robust approach to growing your business and i think sometimes people can take a shortcut that there's a view that here's an opportunity and they start the business without really you know for for, for the love of it maybe and the passion of it without really understanding that this might not necessarily be a successful venture wow. and that's and that's from my perspective that that's again it goes back to a a rigorous approach of analysis patience understanding and execution yeah yeah such a great such a great piece of advice i've got a pyramid in my in my head thinking about the bottom up business plan um and going in um eyes wide open um into that venture absolutely i think for me what i've taken from um today's conversation is uh going with yes until you have to say no um work on yourself and set boundaries and have patience i think it's been um a fantastic um there's been lots of insights and a fantastic conversation today alex thank you so much for joining me um okay. i will pop your linkedin or the or squab storage uh link underneath in um the notes from today but for now i will say thank you so much and i hope we get to see each other soon thank you thanks alex bye